guys, welcome to the latest episode of this unbelievable life. Today I have on with me Amy DeVries with the Isaiah 117 Project. And today she's going to tell us all about the organization, its mission, and how you can help. Uh, and just a quick um, aside with that, uh, we are having a little bit of camera technical difficulties. So um, I am going to post this on both the um, the YouTube and the podcast version, but just for those of you on the YouTube, we will be going in and out with the camera. So Amy, take it away. Good morning. It's great to be here. Uh, I am the newish uh, development manager uh, for the Isaiah 117 project. I've been in the role just a little over three months and uh, I'm excited uh, to be here uh, with you all to just share our vision and our mission um, and to also uh, clear up some confusion because there's a similarly named uh, organization in the community. So um, as you may or may not know, uh, Nikki and the listeners, viewers, um, the Isaiah 117 project was founded here um, in the greater Evansville area in Gibson County um, by Marsha and Cam Lambert just six years ago. Uh, they uh, are, were fostering parents and were, were beginning to, to uh, understand that the, the children who were placed in their care um, had many emotional needs that needed to be uh, met immediately, you know, the trauma of being taken from their primary home, sometimes with nothing more than the clothes on their backs. And um, oftentimes, fostering families need to go out and find those items for the children. And um, Marcia and Kim believe that those children should should have something ready and waiting for them when they're placed. And so it began with what um, we call Bags of Hope in just Gibson County in 2017. And since then has um, grown uh, into an, uh, an organization that's now in, in 11 counties in, in Southwestern Indiana. And we, um, went from just a couple of totes in Cam and Marsha's garage <laughs> to uh, two offices, one in Princeton, one in Evansville, and we serve fostering families. And uh, our primary goal is to help children uh, transition uh, into the, the fostering homes with, uh, with as little disruption um, as possible, which we know that that's not, that's not possible, but we want to be able to provide resources for those families and for those children. So our mission is every child and family impacted by foster care matters. And we strive to meet the spiritual, physical, and emotional needs of fostering families and their children in now 11 counties. We believe that empowered communities who embrace every family and child impacted by foster care are stronger, are stronger communities. And we believe that we are creating permanent systemic and generational change by reaching those children, uh, uh, the vulnerable, ages um, and, and the uh, trauma that they're experiencing and um, doing our best to help foster families and primary families um, turn that around, turn that trauma around with stability and love and, and support. Now, what, uh, what are we doing right now? <laughs> Well, we are currently getting ready for our second annual back to school bash. We are partnering with Jockey. So Jockey is that brand that makes uh, underwear and t-shirts and other items. Uh, the Jockey Being Family Foundation chooses nonprofits um, all over the country and sometimes churches uh, to host their back to school bash and they provide grants to those nonprofits. Uh, this year we're expecting upwards of 200 to 
250 families from uh, our neighboring counties to attend the back to school bash, which will have um, arts and crafts and inflatables and uh, lunch and of course backpacks filled with um, necessities for heading back to school just next month, which is, which is hard to believe. We provide a lot of resources for our families. We have a program called Fortifying Fostering Families, more commonly uh, known within the organization of, as F3. And that is uh, linking families who uh, have children placed in their care with uh, community resources, with churches who would often provide um, spiritual supports, but also um, meals, uh, respite care. And then in addition to that, our two social workers who are in the F3 program do home visits and uh, have uh, at least weekly contact and communication with the now 17 families that we have in the program. And that's about um, 40 children, including uh, children that are, are um, primary children are in that home. So we support the entire family, not just um, the parents, or the children that have been placed in their care. We believe that um, they all need support. There's, there's a lot um, expected from um, the families who volunteer uh, to love on these kids um, when they've been in, you know, pulled from homes due to various situations. So what we need for the July, I said 28th and I meant July 29th, July 29th event, which will be at the first General Baptist Church here in Gibson County at 11 a.m. What we need, uh, we need some folks um, who would um, volunteer the day of the event. You'd have to have a background check, of course, but uh, helping um, these kiddos and their uh, families uh, get pick out the school supplies that they need to get them over to the various um, craft and game and play stations um, at our event. We also need um, businesses to be collection points for school supplies for us. As you can imagine, it's, it's um, quite a chore uh, to make sure that uh, we are meeting at least the basic needs listed on the school supply um, list, which varies from grade level to grade level. And we're also looking for a business who might want to step up and uh, become a community partner with us in a, on a bigger scale, you know, 13, to, 13 to 15 children would get um, everything that they would need to go back to school. Um, with just about $3,000. So a $3,000 sponsor um, could impact that many uh, children that are coming to the event. I wanted to just share with you some additional resources and programming and events that we have throughout the year. So our Back to School Bash is not the only event that we do. It's not uh, the only time that we're interacting with families as I mentioned, um, our, fo our fostering families have been uh, intentional community support, especially for the first two years. We learned in our research that 50 to 70 percent of foster families will quit within the first two years, and they list a lack of support as their reason. There's a lot of stress in taking care of these kiddos who often need, you know, additional um, emotional, mental health, behavioral therapies. Uh, they may might have um, 504s or um, IEPs in schools. And of course, that's additional meetings. So we want to be able to support the foster family so that they're in this for the long haul. It also, it's a, it's a useful tool once people um, 
hear of the supports and resources that we offer in recruiting additional fostering families. Uh, in the state of Indiana, for every seven children in need of um, foster placement, there's one foster family. And I would assume that many of you uh, drive down the road anywhere, corner of Green River and Vogel or the corner of St. Joe and Delaware, you might see signs that say foster parents needed. And that's because the state of Indiana um, is in quite a pickle because of the lack of, of um, fostering families and you know the, the supports that aren't there. We have uh, learned that support provided by all of these different care communities like the churches that we recruit and our social workers um, has led to um, providing additional awareness in the community, as I said, recruiting families to foster and adopt. And they make a world of difference in the lives of the children and the families that are impacted by foster care. Uh, we've, this thing, just in my three months, I've just heard some wonderful stories, um, parents, you know, who are adopting multiple um, children that they've been fostering for a while. Um, we have a program that we really um, are, would like to undergird, and that's our foster success program. And many people may not be aware that education achievement is really low among youth who age out of foster care. So we created a scholarship program offered in partnership with Ivy Tech Community College and Oakland City University, along with the Welburn Baptist Foundation the Foster Success Scholarships uh, are mentorships, which means we're, we're partnering that, that student with a mentor who can promote, you know, um, just, you know, good work habits, study habits, they improve employment opportunities, and they also reduce the risk factors associated with the transition of young adults from foster care experiences. Uh, upwards of two thirds of young adults who age out of foster care will end up uh, experiencing homelessness because of the lack of supports. So our, spot, our scholarships include partnerships with on-campus resources, volunteer mentors, as I mentioned, and we provide material, emotional, support, spiritual support, assistance to the scholarship recipients. And some of those scholarships range from anywhere from uh, $2,500 to full room and board. And we don't um, skip out on the holidays. We, we have uh, Easter Palooza and a Christmas hopes and dreams. Uh, we have um, donated Christmas gifts um, that really, um, help support the foster families who, you know, are, yes, they receive a stipend from the state in case anyone out there is wondering, well, I thought that the state of Indiana helps support these families. You're looking at about 20 something dollars a day. <laughs> so if you're looking at, I know I can't feed a teenager for $20 a day and you're looking at, um, all of the other things it takes, you know, to support and raise a child. So our Christmas Hope and Dreams program, we help with finan financially with the fostering and kinship families. Um, and it's an, uh, also, it's a shopping experience. It's not a handout. So they're actually able to shop for gifts for all of the children in their home at deeply discounted prices. So they get to pick out the gifts for each child in their home. I know many of us love to do things at Christmas time and we might even pick a family and wrap gifts. This, these families get to pick out the gifts because they know the children better than we do. And that is, an, is a, just offering some dignity and some empowerment. Um, they get to show their love and support the unique passions and likes of the children in their home. We provide each family with uh, $100 to $150 or more 
buying power per child that helps stretch their funds even further you know especially if these kiddos like i mentioned have medical appointments and gas is expensive right and this is just another way of supporting families let them know we see you we hear you we support you we value you and the children that you care for uh, coming up in September, Nikki, is uh, uh, an annual Beauty for Ashes pageant, and this is a natural beauty pageant um, where contestants who really want to lead by example in their community and become a role model um, enter this um, pageant, and the winners, you know, give back to the kids impacted by foster care. They bring awareness to, you know, the need for foster uh, families and supports, and that helps build a stronger community. Uh, we had uh, actually a really interesting story about a contestant from some years back who won Beauty for Ashes. She had actually been uh, placed in foster care for some time in her life. And, she went on uh, to um, the University of Evansville and graduated just May with a degree in social work. And she is our second full-time social worker in our fostering, I'm gonna say that wrong this entire podcast, <laughs> Fortifying Fostering Families or F3 program. And we're, uh, she is a go-getter, she's dynamic, she's amazing and we're, uh, blessed and just honored to have her uh, with us because she has experienced what these kiddos have experienced and who better uh, to help support these families than a young adult who's been in the system who knows what it's like to not necessarily have the supports or um, have folks who understand what it's like um, to be part of the system that admittedly needs some work. And that is something that we as an organization are committed to is becoming more deeply involved with these families and entrenched um, in foster care so that we can learn more about what are the systemic needs uh, of, of, the, of foster care in the state of Indiana. What do we need to change? And we know that um, many people have answers um, that haven't built relationships with those families to find out really what do you need from this, what do you need? And we're learning that um, as we provide um, some resources and support for families. I think that the events that we do are built in order to create a fun experience for the children and a sense of community amongst uh, the, the, uh, the families who are taking care of these kiddos. And that in itself um, is is something that is just, um, it's beautiful to witness from strangers who, who think that they're alone in this and start meeting other families uh, within the same county or sometimes, you know, in a neighboring county and become second family because they have these, they have these shared experiences and this desire to make a life um, more stable and hopeful for these for these kiddos. We have a lot of partners that we work with as well in the community. Um, Borrowed Hearts, which is, which is here close to us on our Evansville office, um, they provide necessities for families to come and get clothing or even formula, bottles, beds, high chairs, those types of items for the children. Um, that have been placed in their homes. As I mentioned earlier, some of these kiddos leave with nothing, sometimes because it's, it's not fit to be used or worn. And sometimes it's because it's used as evidence 
um, in a criminal case and the, the children have nothing. And it is an, an amazing partner organization because um, the families get to pick out exactly what they think these kiddos need and seven outfits. That's a great start. A lot going on, every, as I mentioned, every, every week, every month, we are doing something, uh, whether that's fundraising, whether that's awareness events, uh, networking, the more information we get, at, we get out to the community about the need uh, for foster families and for the need for supports um, for um, these families, the better. And we have uh, a little bit of, a, of an exciting announcement. We are planning our inaugural uh, gala. So what we hope will be uh, a fun signature event for the organization. So everyone can mark their calendars. We're only going to have about 250 tickets available for our Wild About Kids Gala, May 4th, 2024. And we're looking for sponsors for, for, for that event. Uh, and we're just planning uh, to make it uh, an event that reminds the community who we're working for, that's uh, Kiddos First, and, and uh, supporting um, the fostering families uh, in the 11 counties that we're now in. And in the meantime, we're still going to be working on our back to school bash coming up in July, our um, September beauty for, beauty for ashes. And then of course our Christmas um, hopes and dreams event, all of those things. Um, you know, um, are in the process of just being supported with our, our wonderful volunteers and our staff of now um, four full-time, six part-time uh, staff members. And with that, um, getting the word out, when you hear the uh, Isaiah 117, some folks may hear Okay, there's another organization called the uh, Isaiah 117 House. What's the difference? And so the House is, a, is an organization that was actually founded in Knoxville, Tennessee, um, about, I don't know, maybe seven years ago. Um, they now have a few houses in a couple of counties here in southwestern Indiana. And that is a safe, comfortable place for a child to go while um, he or she is waiting placement in a foster home. Uh, many times, and we, you may have heard the stories of children who were sleeping on the floor of a DCS office while they were waiting uh, for placement. That is not <laughs> any place a child should be, especially one who's experienced trauma of being pulled from their home. And um, that, uh, there's a house in Vandenberg County. There's a house in, I know, um, Perry. And so that's what the house is. And so we are, after that placement happens, we're there for the children and the families offering, as I said, um, the different supports that, um, and then one more fun thing that we do, and um, I can get some pictures available for folks, but I, you, there's some on our uh, Facebook page, and that is our Dream Cycle program. And that kind of started a, right before the pandemic, and we really were made aware of the need during the pandemic, children needed to get outside. We're on lockdown, you know, so families <laughs> and children um, needed some fresh air. And so with the partnership with Ivy Tech and with uh, Toyota has been an amazing partner. Um, we are able to provide um, bicycles for um, at least 100 children a year who um, get the safety gear along with it. Um, and the folks at Toyota actually put those bikes together and make sure that they're, you know, mechanically sound and ready for those kiddos to ride. And what we've learned is that it gives um, not only um, physical health improvements, right? They're outside, uh, getting that vitamin D, getting the exercise, and they're um, 
in some cases, learning to ride a bike for the first time. Um, but also it provides them with a sense of pride. This is something that's mine. And, you know, they learn how to take care of it. Like my child had to learn, you don't leave your bike out in near the alley because it will be gone <laughs> the next morning, right? And uh, for older kids who uh, might want to work, it's, a, it's, a, it's an opportunity for transportation um, for them to get to and from work when it might be more difficult for a family that maybe has multiple children in their home to load everybody up and get somebody to work and back. We're really proud of that, uh, of that partnership along with you know, all of the other programs that we're doing. Um, some people might recognize me from my years in community organizing. I spent about a decade um, here locally um, as a community organizer. And one thing um, that was constant through that is that for every systemic problem, children, are the most negatively impacted, whether that is addiction, uh, mental health, lack of affordable housing, um, a food desert, um, any, num any number of systemic and community problems, the children are the unwilling um, actors in these, um, in this, you know, this big, drama <laughs> we call life, right? And if we can impact children early, then we are in, we are working with others to change the course of that child's life. They don't have to live in poverty. They don't have to follow um, in the in the generational mental uh, mental illness. There's they they can know that there's there's resources out for them. They do not have to continue and some of the negative um, paths that they had experienced um, before they, they got into more stable um, families or their families got the help that they needed and they get to go back with um, their biological families, which of course is a win-win for everyone. So again, this is what our needs are immediately is July 29th, 11 a.m. Uh, we can, um, provide additional information. If anyone wants to uh, email uh, Amy, A-M-Y, at the Isaiah117project.org, you can go to our website, the Isaiah117project.org. You can find us on Facebook. And we are pretty good at making sure that everyone knows what's going on and what our needs are, or what the needs of the, of the fostering community um, is, and we are always looking to add to our volunteer and our partner base because it truly does take a village. And when we have um, such a disparity in the number of families who are available to take these children, we want to get the word out that you just need to love a child, <laughs> just love a child um, and, and just test the waters and see if you think that you might be uh, the fostering parent that a child needs. We have, we have some single parents, you know, out there doing that. So it doesn't have to be, you know, um, what many of us see as a traditional family Take a look and see if um, if you love children, if you want to change the course of a child's life, then look into look into fostering, and then uh, look into what resources the Isaiah 117 Project has uh, for those families. Good deal. Well, Amy, thank you so much for being on today and for sharing how you know your story of how you guys advocate for those families and for those mm -hmm. children if anybody has any questions or wants to learn more definitely hop on the website or reach out to amy directly um, i want to thank everybody for listening today and i want to wish everybody a blessed and wonderful day